This lateral view of the left side anterior abdominal wall musculature affords us an ability to take a look at not only the muscles, but the fibrous fascial aponeuroses or aponeurotic attachments of them. The external abdominal oblique ends muscularly at the lateral border of the rectus abdominis, as does the muscle belly of internal abdominal oblique, as does the muscle belly of transversus abdominis. Their muscular tissue muscle belly might end approximately at this lateral border of the rectus abdominis, but the fibrous fascial aponeurotic attachment of these three muscles then continue medially and go around the anterior and posterior sides of the rectus abdominis muscle, this vertically oriented muscle, and they ensheath it. So this fascial tissue ensheathing the rectus abdominis can either be called the rectus sheath or it can be called the abdominal aponeurosis. So in reality, the three anterolateral abdominal wall muscles here, and I really should say they're not just anterolateral, but they're also lateral, they're posterolateral, and even the two deeper ones, transversus abdominis and internal abdominal oblique, go all the way into the thoracolumbar fascia, which means they end at the transverse processes of the lumbar spine, which means they're actually posterior abdominal wall or low back muscles but they continue their line of pull all the way to the center, which is the white line where the abdominal aponeuroses or rectus sheaths meet together, and white line in Latin is linea alba. And in reality, that's simply just a joining in together from the two sides, which means that the line of pull transmits across to the other side as well. So the idea being that the abdominal aponeurosis also known as the rectus sheath, is the continuation of the fibrous fascial aponeurotic attachments of the external abdominal oblique, internal abdominal oblique, and the transversus abdominis.